Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Ultima 9 Ascension. And when last we left off, we completely disregarded the plot of Ultima 8, but I don't know why the Avatar just twitched there, and awoke in our bed back on Earth. We were then contacted by Hawkwind through mystical unknown magic, and told to stop sleeping on the job because Britannia is totally being invaded by the Guardian and is about to fall. We really shouldn't have come back home, but that's besides the point. We're about to leave our house after doing quite a lot of tutorial stuff, but we're about to do quite a bit more out there. But before we go, I must tell you that once you have a save in the game, the game immediately loads up to that point when you start. You don't go through the introductory cutscene, you don't have a main menu, it just throws you right back into the action, which is a really good thing, it gets you playing immediately. I'd rather be thrown back into the action right in Britannia, right at the end of Ultima 8 leading into 9, but we can't always get what we want, so let us open the door and explore our yard. You still have much to learn before you travel to Britannia. Visit the training area on the northwest side of your house. Can do! This is a very nice yard. We have lots of butterflies, and there is also a dog. Our pet dog that I'm going to call Scruffy. But for now, let us run over to the telescope and look through. And see the gypsy that we are going to be visiting soon enough. And there is our dog! And that howling is not our dog, that is a wolf. How are you doing, Scruffy? Are you well? You'll be fine. You, along with the rat, are now going to be the master of this really big house. Right next to a park. The Avatar certainly has a lot of money. Let us go to our front gate and learn about controls. Do you remember this game? You may find you are more nimble than you think. You can move in all directions. Try traversing the hopscotch board by pressing the control or alt keys at the same time as the right mouse button. Using all three together will move you backwards. That's right, Scruffy! We have exact controls. Holding right allows us to move forward. If we hold control, we move left. Hold alt, we move right. Hold both, we move back. And we can do these while we are running as well. This is a little bit faster as well, when you are running. Of course, you can do all this by just using the arrow keys as well, but I'm going to try and use the mouse as much as possible. And then, there is this sword. To equip your sword, drag it onto yourself. Pressing the tab key will put you into combat mode, and you will draw your sword. While your sword is drawn, Pressing the left mouse button will make you thrust with your sword. Press the tab key again to sheath your weapon. I'm not sure that's how combat happens, Avatar. We accidentally clipped onto the dummy there, but this is how you have at thee! And by Ultima 8 logic, we are improving our strength as we strike. This weapon, by the way, as you can see from the uh, attack bar on the top right, is a really powerful sword. Unfortunately, we won't be bringing that with us on our adventure. You'll see why, and uh, people who've played the previous games will know why. To equip your bow, drag it onto yourself. Don't forget to pick up the arrows sitting nearby. Pressing the tab key will put you into combat mode, and you will arm your bow. Clicking the left mouse button will draw back an arrow, and releasing the button will fire it. Press the tab key again to unready your weapon. And that is ranged combat! I'll be using that a fair bit, but I tend to focus on melee combat. That's right, Scruffy! I am a fine archer. Makes sense, we are the Avatar after all. Anything over here of any note? Well, there is the uh, food and water bowl for Scruffy. Don't know if that's actually the dog's name. And some boxes, probably full of more arrows. By the way, we have done all we need to here. So clearly, let us go and explore Austin, which is where we currently are. Avatar, once you have mastered your skills here, you should go out the gate in front of your house and seek the gypsy who will guide you to Britannia. It may look like there are lots of places that we can go beyond this fence that are being uh, locked off by the game, but that is actually a flat image there 
there is literally nothing to see. Also, we just got an objective in our journal. The way we actually have to go is this way. And of course, we're going to get another tutorial from Hawkwind. Did you bring the key from your desk? Locked doors will be unlocked automatically if you have the proper key, and the key will be left behind once it is used. That's quite handy. Take care of yourself, Scruffy. I'm off on an adventure! You unlock the gate. Britannia can be a dangerous place, so be sure to practice your combat and swimming skills here in the woods near your home. Once you feel you have mastered them, seek out the gypsy who will guide you on your journey. Will do! Keep Austin beautiful. Use your trash receptacles. Looks like someone missed. Park and Recreation Department, Park Curfew, 10pm to 5am. No motorised vehicles. Gotcha. There's quite a few things that we can look at here, including this very important set of stone monolith things. They won't be important for anything, they are totally important. You can climb many objects, such as this log. To do so, move very close to it and press the C key. There we go. Also, there's a wolf over there. We may have to have at thee. Maybe. Animals in park are not tame and may cause injury. Uh-oh! Have at thee! You better not come and attack me. You better not. I am armed, and I know how to use this sword. I'm just gonna go this way. Okay, oh! You should not have tried that. That was foolish. I'll take your gold, though. No idea why you have gold on you. Also, we now have 25 gold. That is the uh, indicator for how much gold we have. That dog was foolish. It's actually a wolf, but uh, that is how powerful that weapon is. We will not be this powerful for a long time afterwards. Sometimes the wolf will attack you, sometimes it won't. It all depends. We don't want to go over to uh, where the gypsy is right now. Instead, we will go this way and find another wolf, and also a place where we can swim. I'm gonna go and see if you're going to attack. Looks like you are! You really shouldn't! Don't do it! You shouldn't have tried. And we get more gold. 45 gold now! Hello! Now if we enter via a certain angle, we may get some more dialogue. I think it's here. No swimming, no fishing, no wading. I do what I want! You'll find that swimming is easy. While moving, look down to dive down, and look up to swim back to the surface. If you hold the control or alt keys while swimming, you'll be able to swim sideways, or even do the backstroke. Interesting! Let's do that! We are currently underwater. Need to be careful, because we only have so much air. And there's not a lot that we can actually uh, do here. Also, as a note, we do naturally start floating up to the surface, which is a nice touch. There is something over here that we do want to uh, get to. Don't mind me, fish. You are literally blocking my way, but that's fine. Let us go past the waterfall and find some more arrows. I mean, we're not really going to be using the arrows, but nice to know that there are secrets scattered about. Now, time to keep exploring this park. So there are already wolves that will attack people. There's also... That spider! Have at thee! Spider is gone. Can't pick things up when we're in combat mode. Now that uh, brigand over there is not somebody just dressing up to look like a uh, medieval brigand. That actually is a brigand who will try and kill us. Now, in here is not a whole lot. Now let's go and say hello to the brigand. Greetings! You have drawn a cutlass, and you are going to fight me. Well, this is going to end shortly. And the fight is done. Now I've no idea why there is somebody in, uh medieval attire and wielding a dagger trying to attack us in a park? It's probably best not to think about that, and instead, 
look about and find something else that we can uh, explore. Like this ominous cave here, full of rats that are ridiculously huge! Why are there huge rats? Who can say? But we are having at thee and defeating them. Also, sometimes it can be tricky to find the uh, stuff left by uh, enemies because they fall in particular ways. But then they turn into piles of goo very quickly and you can just go and uh, grab their stuff. There is some bottles here, more bottles, and if we go down here, another rat who is really having difficulty uh, getting to us. That's okay, the rat made it. Eventually. Pathfinding is not the strongest point of many of the uh, enemies, and it's not the strongest point of us either. Now over here is a magical healing potion. That's right, that is a magic healing potion. Why that thing exists here on Earth, who can say? But we have it. So, we've got some more arrows as well, and can we destroy these barrels? The answer is yes. Is there a reason to do so? No. No, there is not. There is no reason to do that. But, we have mastered combat, we have mastered movement, we know how to swim. There is only one more thing we need to do now, and that is... to have combat, apparently, with this giant rat! How about they? And even more gold. If you just, like, paid a visit to this park, as long as you could deal with giant rats and a brigand, you would be rich beyond your wildest dreams, because we have 84 coins made of gold. They'd be worth a fortune. No camping. And yet, camping is happening! You rebel, you! There's somewhere we can sleep. There's a small axe there, but what we actually want to do is go in here and speak to the gypsy. Now, we haven't had a uh, event like this in an Ultima game since Ultima 6. So it's nice to have this back for the very final journey. But we have lots of questions, and hopefully we'll get some answers here. Let us go in, and walk in of course, because it's only polite. I like the fact that the uh, dialogue gets louder the closer we are. Let us indeed be seated. Greetings, Avatar. Britannia awaits. This will be your ultimate challenge. The final battle for the destiny of Britannia. If you take this journey, you will never return to Earth again. Nor shall you return to Britannia. Are you now prepared for this most important quest? I have many questions. And we now get to hear the voice of the Avatar. What journey? Long have you been the savior of Britannia. Eight times before you have made this trip and saved Britannia from utter destruction. This time, you must finish the task. For after this journey, your future lies on a different path. Have you mastered combat, swimming, and the use of your equipment? What future path are you talking about? You are speaking cryptically, and it's concerning me. Also, look at our fists here. Never will we be able to unclench that fist and show that we actually have fingers. Such is the model of the Avatar. What future path? This I cannot see. I only know it to be true. Are you ready? No. Not yet. I understand. Return to me when you are ready. We cannot progress until we actually are ready, though. So, let us get back on the chair and sit back down. If we can sit back down. Ah, you have returned. Are you now prepared for your journey? Sometimes you can end up sitting on the chair in such a way that you are floating above the seat of the chair. But right now we're okay. We should ask this question just for the dialogue. How should I prepare myself? You must first search this forest. There is much you can learn here that will help you on your journey. You need to learn swimming and combat before you can travel to Britannia. Are you ready? We are ready. We are prepared. As much as we can be. Can we take the sword with us? No? Alright then. I am prepared. 
Long have you been the savior of Britannia. Eight times before you have made this trip and saved Britannia from utter destruction. This time, you must finish the task. For after this journey, your future lies on a different path. Have you mastered combat, swimming, and the use of your equipment? Yes, we have. I am ready. Good. Then let us begin the reading. I shall ask you a series of seven questions. Give each question serious consideration. Your answers shall determine how you will begin your journey to Britannia. I have these cards, they're very cool. You have sworn to protect your lord at any cost, yet know he has committed a crime. If authorities asked you of the affair, would you show honesty or honor? There are no wrong answers here. As you go through each of these questions, you eliminate certain virtues. In the end, the virtues that you picked in the first round are pitted against each other. And finally, you make an ultimate decision that determines your class in Ultima 9, and in the other games that this also happens. It doesn't stop you in this game from focusing on other things, but it does determine what you have a specialization in, as well as what equipment you start with when you arrive in Britannia. For there is some bonus uh, goodies available in a chest that you will have access to. Each of these virtues is the presence or absence of the three principles. Now we have to choose here between honor and honesty. Do we uphold honor by silently keeping our oath, or do we break the oath by honestly speaking? We're gonna pick this one. Break my oath by honestly speaking. Time for the next one. You believe that virtue resides in all people. If you saw a rogue steal from your lord, would you show justice or spirituality? We will pick spirituality here. Personally try to sway him back to the spiritual path of good. Personally try to sway him back to the spiritual path of good. Another virtue is gone. A burly knight accosts you and demands your food. Will you show valor or sacrifice? We are not going to sacrifice our rations. We will valiantly refuse. Valiantly refuse and engage the knight. We will have at thee! Also, these cards are massive. The captain of the King's Guard has asked one among you to visit a hospital to cheer the children with tales of valiant personal deeds. Will you show compassion or humility? Of these two, we will show compassion. Show my compassion and play the braggart. We've dealt with four cards. Now it gets trickier. You have been prohibited by your absent lord from fighting. If you saw your friends in a close pitched battle, would you show honesty or valor? It gets trickier here, but I know what we will pick. People who've watched uh, me play Ultima 1 will know what I'm aiming for here. Show valor and aid my comrades, knowing I can deny it later. I'm sure they'll believe you, Avatar. You have been taught to preserve all life as sacred. If a man were fatally stung by a venomous serpent and begged for a merciful death, would you show compassion or spirituality? This is a tricky question. Very tricky. We'll pick this one, just so that we can see the final, uh, decision between compassion and valor. Show compassion and end his pain. And finally... You manage to disarm your mortal enemy in a duel, and he is at your mercy. Will you show compassion or valor? If I wasn't aiming for one class, I would definitely pick compassion and end up being a bard. But we will pick this one, so that we can go to the class that I want to play this game as. Slay him, as expected of a valiant duelist. The compassion card vanishes, and this card is brought forth. Avatar. You have favored the virtue of valor. 
You will start your journey on the path of a fighter to help you on your way. Your strength will be increased when you go through the portal to Britannia. Your ability to inflict and sustain damage in battle shall be great. Once you arrive in Britannia, you will find a chest of supplies appropriate to your chosen path that I have left for you in the Tower of Stonegate. Use these supplies wisely, Avatar. Good luck, for your quest will be most difficult. Once in Britannia, seek out Lord British, the wise ruler of the land. That moon gate is purple. Why is the moon gate purple? A good question. Go now to Britannia. Your fate awaits you. Also, why are we going to Stonegate? Stonegate is, I believe, where the Shadow Banes were in Ultima 5. Why would we want to go there? Hurry, Avatar, for you are needed in Britannia. We will get no more dialogue here. I do, however, want to see what's in here. Ooh, lots of stuff. Let's grab all of this money. That is 140 we now have, and the good old uh, image there of the pouch. This, by the way, is uh, Ethical Hedonism, a philosophical muse on the meaning of life and how one should live it, by Richard Garriott, 1999. Why should I do unto others as I would have them do unto me? Why can't I poison the rivers and clear-cut all the forests? Why must I obey the laws of state? Is it because some god will damn me to eternal hell? Well, that would be a good reason, but I believe a more basic reason is all that is needed. Religions of the world outline moral codes of conduct by which one can live a successful life. But must one be religious to have such a code? In this book, I propose that such guidance can be found in mere thought alone, that logic and reason can guide you through the trials of life. At the very least, I think that what is outlined herein can help you think about the beliefs you hold and why you hold them. In this way, I hope that after reading this, you will feel as I do that knowing why you believe something is as important as what you believe. Other friends either here at Origin or in my life have pondered this subject with me, and later chapters will include their words and logic. I'd like to point out Herman Miller, longtime friend and co-author of the Ultima series as a principal contributor. Hedonism. Life is to be lived to the fullest. Who does not hope that at their own end, they can smile knowing that they have enjoyed their journey? To each enjoyed will be different. Some will want to have achieved greatness. Others will want to have left this world better than when they arrived. Some will just want to sit back and enjoy what life brings them. If one lived alone on an otherwise lifeless deserted planet, one would feel free to do whatever one wished to pursue one's own happiness. If you wanted to poison all the water or chop off your own arm, whatever made you happy should be okay. A life of unbridled hedonism would be yours. It would be a lonely hedonistic life, but it would be yours to do with as you and only you choose to make it. Ethics. Most people choose to live in the company of other people. We gather together in communities, for many reasons. A community of people has many social survival and economic advantages. If we want these advantages, we must restrict our hedonism and avoid doing things that would otherwise make others push us out of their community. We must not interfere with others' basic rights to pursue their own hedonism. Thus, while living alone, we could have poisoned the world's waters. Living amongst the masses that we do, we must refrain from this type of activity. I will call these restraints ethics. I will define ethics to be logically derived restrictions on hedonism. I will avoid the term morals that is often used to describe rules of conduct derived in other ways, for example, because a deity has said so. Ethical hedonism. An interesting symbol for this philosophy can be derived by superimposing a vertical line or one on top of an infinity symbol. The symbol can mean the balance between the hedonistic life you could leave alone, balanced with the fact that we choose to live together in a growing, limitless society. Thus, a 1 and the figure 8 infinity symbol combine to create the symbol for ethical hedonism. Not a book I've ever read before in this game, but there it is. And in here is... Is that a fish? I don't know what that is. It looks like some kind of fish, but either way, we have done enough here. And we need to uh, get over this table. This, this could actually be tricky. This could actually be tricky, but we can just walk over the table. Sort of. Can we jump over the table again now? Yes, we sort of can. 
excellent. And so, folks, when we come back, we will go through the swirly magical portal to Britannia that, by the way, anyone else could currently walk through right now and just fall into a magical world of medieval fantasy. If they did, they probably won't like what they see on the other side, because let's just say that I think the Guardian is expecting us. After all, we should have been there quite a while ago, and yet we didn't turn up, so I imagine the Guardian's getting quite impatient. Rest assured, Guardian, we will be there to stop you soon. With our increased strength, and all of the items that we will have for being a fighter. For we were a fighter in Ultima 1, it only makes sense to continue that trend at the very end, and to be someone who has at thee! Because let's face it, it's what we're good at, isn't it? And so, when we come back, the music cut out and has started again, and we will head to Britannia. No more tutorials! Oh, who are we kidding? There are going to be more tutorials. But at least, they're going to be tutorials in the magical world that awaits. And so, I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later.